dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. Today, abortion proponents gathered in San Francisco. This weekend marks 50 years since Roe versus Wade decision gave Americans the constitutional right to an abortion. Decision that was overturned last summer. CBS's Robert Costa is at the Capitol tonight with the latest. Does the push to restrict abortion rights continue? I think yes, no question. Uh, uh, it now moves more or less to the state capitals. Evangelical leader Franklin Graham, son of the famed Billy Graham, was one of thousands of anti-abortion activists who turned up in Washington Friday for the March for Life, arguing that the end of Roe is not the end of their fight. Nothing has really changed. Abortions are still happening every day. But the persistence from conservatives on abortion comes as Republicans are at a crossroads. Some, like former President Donald Trump, have blamed last year's disappointing election results on the abortion issue, being poorly handled by Republicans. I'll be joining some people at the March for Life next week, and, um, and I've made it very clear. It may take us as long to restore the sanctity of life to the center of American law as it took us to overturn Roe v. Wade. But in the early days of the 2024 presidential race, Possible Trump rivals are shaking their heads at Trump's assessment and tilting to the right. And would you nudge Governor DeSantis to take further action? I would nudge every governor to do what they can to back up uh, their pro-life record. I think that, that talking about um, situations and making statements is incredibly important, but also taking action and governing and bringing policies to protect life are even more important. And the issue has sparked an informal policy standoff among those who might run for president. But many attending the march acknowledge the politics of this issue. Long, highly charged, remain complicated. In order for the best ideas to come forward, you need to be able to willing to listen to each other. You need to be able to hear your opponents, understand what they're thinking, have empathy and compassion, and come up with ideas together. Meanwhile, 50 years after Roe v. Wade, Vice President Kamala Harris will be in Florida tomorrow to deliver a major address on abortion rights as Democrats continue to push on this issue as well. Robert Costa, CBS News, Washington. CBS News has learned Chief of Staff Ron Klain will leave the White House in the coming months, sometime after the State of the Union, State of the Union in early February. He's been a longtime confidant of the president and a key player in legislation. There's going to be an increased police presence at Floyd County Schools on Monday. Floyd County Schools says the district was made aware of a social media post containing a threat to Betsy Lane High School on Friday. The Floyd County Sheriff's Office investigated the incident and found the threat to not be credible. A small plane made an emergency landing on the interstate causing congestion in Knox County, Tennessee Saturday afternoon. Federal Aviation Administration spokesperson said only the pilot was on board the Zenith 750 when it crashed. The pilot, Frank Grubbs, told WVLT News, our sister station, that he had been flying for less than 40 minutes when the engine failed. At that point, he said he remained calm, landed on the highway. Other than the front wheel being destroyed, Grubb said the plane was in good condition. I just didn't have any choices because y'all looked around and trees and buildings and people and I was just trying to, so at least I just turned and I was going in the direction of the traffic so I could stay out of the way. Following the fatal shooting in Floyd County last summer that killed three police officers and a police canine, one Knott County organization and church wanted to host a law enforcement appreciation dinner for first responders. The Car Creek Fish and Game Club, along with Hyman United Methodist Church, hosted that law enforcement appreciation dinner tonight, inviting first responders and their spouses to eat, win prizes, and feel appreciated for the work they do throughout their communities. To dedicate your life to a community who does not always appreciate you, um, to go ahead first into something that you don't know what the outcome may be, that's a big sacrifice, big sacrifice. And they have to really love what they do to be able to do that. And they need to be thanked. Volunteers also use this event to remember Knott County Sheriff's Office Chief Deputy Bristol Taylor who was killed in the line of duty 50 years ago this year. Taylor's widow, Fern Taylor, says she feels grateful that volunteers 
wanted to honor her husband and keep his memory alive during this event. Nearly six months following the historic flood, Knott County community members gathered for a New Year's Celebration of Hope event at the Heinemann Settlement School. The school, in partnership with Kate's Food Tent, offered food, live music, and a sense of hope to community members for what the new year may have in store. Today just felt like normal life for them. They didn't have to think, you know, not only hot meal and the to-go container, then going home. We all got to gather, people got to dress up, just come and be together. Like, just something that they would have done pre-flood. That was very important to me. Both representatives with the Hyman Settlement School and Kate Clemens with Kate's Food Tent say they hope to host more events like this for the community in the future. Tonight was a night for basketball fans in Knott and Floyd counties to turn back the clock. Knott County Central High School hosted one of the many Glory Road Project games at the old Hyman High School gym. The Patriots wore throwback jerseys representing the old Hyman High School. Their opponents, Floyd Central, wore jerseys representing the old Wayland High School. The game is one of many across the Commonwealth celebrating and recognizing iconic basketball gyms. This is something that will help people remember and understand, you know, the history behind it, tradition behind it, because in this area, people love this game. You know, and they still, you can see by the turnout that they still do. This is really great to be doing this for young kids coming up to see, you know, and feel the, the tradition that's been here for years and years. Both Knott Central and Floyd Central will play again in two weeks in another Glory Road Project game. That one will be at the old Wayland High School gym. We'll have highlights of tonight's game on Sports Overtime. Earlier today, a few Krypton Volunteer Fire Department members came together to clean up an area that they believe has become an illegal dumping site here in Perry County. Volunteers with the department cleaned up an area along Sam Campbell Branch Road in Perry County. One volunteer with the department, Bobby Brown, says this is not an isolated incident. He says the littering issue across Perry County is the worst he's seen in the 20 years he's been living there. All you got to do is cruise around to every river bank and every stream bank in Perry County and see the amount of trash that's thrown down there waiting for the next flood to wash it away. And that's what's going on right now in Perry County. It's a shame. Brown says he and other volunteers clean these areas at least three times a week. He adds that if people don't know how to get rid of trash or other unwanted items, they need to call the Perry County Dump or the Perry County Conservation District to get more information. Invest 606 has taken small businesses in eastern Kentucky to another level since its founding a few years ago. In Demo Day today, where business owners presented their missions, each also explored other ideas from one another. On top of that, Bluegrass Cricket's owner, T.J. Rayhill, says they've gotten more time in the spotlight. Um, outreach is important. Uh, being part of Invest of 606 uh, is giving me a wider platform. Uh, being interviewed by news stations, by newspapers, uh, being able to pitch my idea and uh, just introduce it to the broader audience. It's just been an amazing experience. 41 businesses from across the region have now been represented represented in Invest 606.